Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Mind Your Exam. In this video, we will be studying about the stop and wait protocol. Now the stop and wait protocol is a flow control protocol. So as we have already seen, flow control means controlling the speed of transmission. Okay, so how fast the sender is sending data depends upon how fast the receiver can receive the data okay so controlling the flow of information is governed by the flow control protocol and today we are studying the first flow control protocol which is stop and wait protocol now this protocol is used at the data link layer okay we have seen that flow control is a functionality of the data link layer and that is why flow control protocol or the stop and wait protocol is used at the data link layer. Now, whenever in stop and wait protocol, the sender has to send one frame, he sends or transmits that frame to the receiver and then he stops. That means he stops sending more frames to the receiver. And why does he do that? Because the sender cannot or the sender does not send any other frame until it receives an acknowledgement from the receiver and this acknowledgement basically confirms that the receiver has received the previous frame and now the receiver is ready to process and accept the next frame. So the process in stop and wait protocol is the sender sends one frame to the receiver as soon as the receiver receives that frame, the receiver will send back an acknowledgement that I have received your first frame and now you can proceed with the second frame or third frame or so on. And only when the sender receives that acknowledgement, then the sender will start sending the next frame. So as long as the receiver has not received the previous frame and the sender has not got back the acknowledgement from the receiver, that entire time the sender will not do anything. Okay, So at that time, the sender will be waiting for receiving the acknowledgement. So it does not send any other frame and this time the sender spends in waiting for the acknowledgement of the frame that was previously sent to the receiver. Therefore, the waiting time of the sender consists of two parts. The first part is the data transmission time or the frame transmission time. How much time it takes for the data or the frame sent by the sender to, to be received by the receiver. So frame transmission time. Now this time is required as well as another component of the waiting time of the sender is acknowledgement receipt time. So two times are crucial that add up to the waiting time of the sender. The acknowledgement receiving time or the acknowledgement receipt time. So basically the uh, when the sender has sent the entire frame on the link, then the time taken by that frame to reach the receiver is required and also the time taken by the acknowledgement from the receiver to get back to the sender is also required and both these times add up and contribute to the entire or total waiting time of the sender in the stop and wait protocol. Now the sender sends the next frame only after receiving the acknowledgement of the previous frame. Okay, so in this case only after receiving the acknowledgement or you also call, is, call it as an ACK in the short form ACK acknowledgement of the previous frame. So once the sender sends a frame then he starts waiting then the receiver sends back the acknowledgement. Only when the acknowledgement gets back to the sender, the sender will send the next frame. So now this is a diagrammatic representation of the stop and wait protocol that I will just draw here. 
So what is actually happening is we have a sender and we have a receiver. The sender has first sent some data. Let us call it data frame 1. Now the sender starts waiting from this point onwards. Now all the duration that is consumed in taking this data 1 from sender to the receiver and coming off the acknowledgement for this data 1 from the receiver to the sender, this entire time the sender will keep on waiting and this time the sender will sit idle and do nothing. Now once the sender gets back this ACK1, ACK1 means the acknowledgement of data 1, then what the sender will do? That sender will generate a new data frame and send it to the receiver. Now let us say this is data frame 2. Once the receiver receives this, the sender will get back the acknowledgement after some time. And again, this duration the sender will spend in waiting for the ACK of data 2. Okay. So, this is one pro important point that you must take care that the sender is not doing anything unless and until it has received the acknowledgement of the previous frame that it just sent. Now, let us understand why does the sender has to stop and wait for the acknowledgement. So, this is important to ensure flow control, to ensure or to adhere with the flow control scenario. And that means to avoid overwhelming the receiver, overwhelming the receiver with large number of frames or overwhelming the receiver with more frames than he or she can process, with more frames than the receiver or it can process. So, if the sender is keep on sending a lot of frames very quickly and the receiver is not able to accept them, process them and generate an acknowledgement for them, then the frames will start getting lost. So to avoid lossing of frames, okay. So if this happens when, when the uh, overwhelming of the receiver happens, then the frames start getting lost. And to avoid this, we ensure that flow control is maintained through the stop and wait protocol. That means we only send at a speed that the receiver can accept and process. So this, an, this is an important reason that you must understand that in stop and wait protocol, frames will never get lost as long as this protocol is being followed. So let us see what are the advantages of the stop and wait protocol. The first advantage is that it is the simplest flow control protocol. It is the simplest flow control protocol because as in when we study the further protocols, they will get more complex in their implementation and logic. And the second advantage is that it ensures accuracy that means frames are not lost. Frames do not get lost. Okay. So that is why these are the advantages of stop and wait protocol. Now coming to the disadvantages. Although stop and wait is effective but it is very slow because as you can see it leads to a lot of time wastage when the data has been sent after the data, that means after the sender has sent the data and before he or she receives the acknowledgement for data. This entire waiting time is reducing the performance or throughput of the sender. So the slowness of this protocol is its disadvantage and also you can see that at any given time the communication is only happening in one direction. So it is unidirectional in nature. That means we require that only one at one time the sender only sends the data and once the sender's data has reached the receiver at that time the only the receiver can use the channel or the link to get back to the sender with an acknowledgement. Simultaneously this is not happening okay so do not get confused this is not simultaneous transmission 
only when data 1 has reached the receiver after that point ACK1 will start entering okay so this was all about the flow control protocol which is the stop and wait protocol I hope you have understood this topic thank you for watching if you understood this topic and it, it helped you in any possible way please let us know in the comment section below thank you for watching till we meet in the next video mind your exam